Unsuccessful Encounter. Allow me to share a story with you, which I titled The Mission to Save the Cleanliness of Our Yard. It revolves around a protagonist named Dennis, a 35-year-old individual who recently purchased an apartment in our neighborhood. I had previously mentioned my intention to get to know this neighbor better and promised to bide my time. However, as fate would have it, things did not go as planned. Dennis turned out to be rather secretive and uncommunicative during his one-year tenure in the neighborhood. The most interaction we, the tenants of our building, received from him was a dry hello. If not for a fortunate turn of events, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to recount this life story to you. On my way back from visiting my son's house in the suburbs, I had already parked my car in a spot within the yard. Before I could even switch off the engine, the front passenger door swung open and a woman in her 30s hurriedly occupied the seat. Please, don't kick me out, she pleaded anxiously. I'd like to wait here until they disperse. Who? I asked reflexively. Them, she replied, nodding towards our entrance, where Dennis and another man engaged in an argument. Can I take you somewhere? I inquired, attempting to discern her fear and any potential danger she might be facing. No, I need to wait until they leave, she answered curtly, shifting her gaze between me and the ongoing dispute. My initial assumption was that Dennis was involved in an affair with this woman, and the arrival of a jealous husband had prompted this confrontation. Naturally, my curiosity was piqued. However, I couldn't gauge how long the woman planned to remain concealed in my car. Therefore, I decided to gather some information. Is that her husband? I asked gently. Who? She responded in surprise, looking me in the eye. Well, the larger man on the right, I clarified, pointing towards Dennis's adversary. No, I'm not married at all. Although I could have gotten into trouble, she replied, her tone tinged with anger. Well, never mind. I'll give him the exposure of a lifetime. Who? I asked, taken aback. The one on the left, she gestured towards the entrance, identifying Dennis. Dennis? I asked, offering a slight smile. What did he do wrong? Do you know him? She asked, surprised as she turned halfway towards me. Well, in a way, he's been quite secretive despite living here for over a year, I honestly confessed. Yena, the woman suddenly said, keeping it brief. Petrovich, I responded likewise. So what are we waiting for, Diana? Well, we're waiting for the man on the right to leave. I need to talk to Dennis, Yena answered, once again peering towards the entrance. How long have they been arguing here? I wondered. They just started. I was afraid of being seen, or rather, how Dennis would react, Yena explained. Petrovich, could you open the window? I'd like to hear what they're talking about. I turned the ignition key and rolled down my window along with the front passenger seat window. Yana thanked me with a smile and listened attentively to the snippets of conversation emanating from the entrance. I must admit, curiosity was getting the better of me, although the phrases I managed to catch were devoid of any meaningful context. After approximately five minutes, both men moved towards the entrance, indicating that Dennis was planning to show something to his interlocutor. Oh darn it, what do we do now? Yena exclaimed in annoyance. Who would have thought he wouldn't leave, but instead accompany Dennis? Probably to his apartment, right? Most likely, I replied dryly. But the coast is clear now, nobody will notice you if you get out of the car. Petrovich, do you have some more time? Yena asked me with a hint of flattery. In this yard, I'll be as inconspicuous as can be, you know? I just need to follow them for a little while. They won't be lingering until the morning, will they? They'll surely leave soon. Will you tell me what happened between you and Dennis? Or perhaps it involves both of you? I don't even know how to phrase the question. I confessed, not concealing my curiosity. What happened? The groom turned out to be a jerk, as you saw for yourself. Yena indignantly replied. Well, to be honest, I didn't see anything, I admitted straightforwardly. 
Sensing an opportunity to extract information from Yena at that moment, I continued assertively, tell me while we wait. There's still time, share the details with me. It was evident that Yena was emotionally charged. As you may know, women in such a state tend to reveal the most intriguing facts and share the most unique life stories. My instincts didn't let me down, and I didn't have to ask Yana twice. A casual encounter over beers. It had been a snowy winter, and the city seemed to be blanketed in a never-ending layer of white. The snowfall was relentless, causing the streets and sidewalks to be covered with a thick layer of snow. For days, I had been observing the efforts of hard-working janitors and small city machinery, attempting to keep up with the elements. Reluctantly, I decided to venture out to the store to replenish our groceries, leaving my car behind and opting to walk instead. As I made my way back home, enjoying the crisp winter air and the satisfying crunch of the barely-touched snow beneath my feet, I noticed our diligent janitor from a distance. Well, at least I thought it was her. People wearing overalls tend to look the same from afar. Inka Vasilyevna, our dependable janitor, had been taking care of our yard for years. And despite being around the same age as me, I, like the other residents, addressed her respectfully by her first name and patronymic. Please pass on my greetings to Inka Vasilyevna. I cheerfully greeted her from a distance. May you have a smooth day. And greetings to you too, came a male voice in response. Wow, I suddenly felt like I was in the movie Operation Y. I exclaimed with a smile, looking at the elderly man who had turned towards me. Where's grandma? I'm here on her behalf, he replied with a broad smile, either quoting a line from the movie or expressing it spontaneously. Has something happened to Inga Vasilyevna? I asked with a hint of concern. No, her granddaughter gave birth in a neighboring town, so she went to see her great-grandson. I'm here to fill in for her, the man explained calmly. I'm Igor. Nice to meet you, Igor. I'm Petrovich, I said, extending my hand. Pleasure is mine, Igor replied, shaking my hand. Hey, Petrovich, do you need any help around the house? Moving furniture or fixing a faucet, perhaps? Well. I don't think so, I responded, surprised. But it seems you're eager to lend a hand. Yeah, I'm craving a beer, and I need some money for it, so I thought I'd ask. My new acquaintance answered unabashedly. Does your wife take all your earnings? I asked, smiling, more rhetorically than anything. However, before I could continue, Igor interrupted. No wife and no earnings either. So is there any work for me? I can do anything if needed, he stated earnestly, leaning on the handle of a large plastic shovel. You know what? Come inside, and we'll have a beer together, I said thoughtfully, recalling that I had a few bottles in the fridge. Deal, I'll finish up here quickly, like a bayonet thrust, Igor cheerfully replied. I called my apartment to let my wife know we would be having a guest, and went to the kitchen to prepare some sandwiches and grab beer mugs. Occasionally, I glanced out the kitchen window, observing Igor diligently working on clearing the snow. Once he had finished clearing all the pathways, he grabbed a broom and swept the approaches to the entrances, revealing the asphalt beneath. Approximately three hours after our conversation on the street, Igor stood on the doorstep of my apartment. So, he began from the threshold, taking off his shoes. What do you have in store for me, Petrovich? Any work? Hmm. I was taken aback by Igor's eagerness to work after he had already shoveled mountains of snow in the yard. I actually invited you over for a beer. Uh, no, that wasn't the deal, Igor protested, starting to put his shoes back on. We agreed on work. I can't just accept and not contribute. Wait a minute. I tried to stop him before he could leave. Nobody is offering you beer for free if you're so principled. Take off your shoes, wash your hands, and meet me in the kitchen. Let's strike a favorable barter. I'll give you a beer, and you give me valuable information. Igor gave me a questioning look, 
but obediently removed his shoes and headed to the bathroom. Meanwhile, I waited for him in the kitchen, already having poured beer into the mugs. Tell me, Igor, is storytelling considered work? I asked with a smile as my guest appeared in the kitchen doorway. Well, for artists, perhaps it is, Igor responded uncertainly. You mentioned that you can do anything, right? I looked up at Igor and continued without waiting for an answer. After living so many years, surely you have some interesting stories to tell, like life experiences or funny incidents. I do have plenty of such stories, Igor cheerfully replied. I can definitely share a few. Great, let's make a deal. You tell me stories for my collection, and I'll provide you with cold beers for your enjoyment. I proposed, suggesting a mutually beneficial exchange. If we had met earlier, maybe we would have a child by now. But I didn't want to throw tantrums at the man I loved. I really wanted him to confess everything himself, and we discussed it calmly. It remained to bring him into the conversation, or create a situation where he couldn't turn away, and would be compelled to reveal everything as the truth. And today happened to be the perfect day. It was the weekend, after all. We were strolling through the city when Dennis received a phone call. He stepped aside, as usual, and returned looking worried. Yanchik, I think we've had enough for today, Dennis said hurriedly. Our neighbors called, claiming I've been flooding their place. We need to go and check it out. What a nightmare, I exclaimed. So why wait? Let's go and see. I'll take care of it, Dennis said seriously. If I am indeed causing flooding, there will be a lot of shouting and accusations. I don't think you'd be pleased to see me getting blamed. Why do I call you a cab? You know I can't give you a ride because I'm in a hurry. Dennis hailed a cab for me and even paid for it, providing the driver with my home address. However, as soon as we drove away, I instinctively changed the route without even realizing why. I gave Dennis his address instead and promised to compensate the cab driver extra. Throughout the journey to Dennis's house, or rather to where he lived, I couldn't answer the question as to why I was doing this and what I should do upon arrival. But since I believed that nothing happens without reason, I concluded that my decision had purpose. The main thing was to reach the destination, and then I would decide what to do. And if Dennis lied to me again, I would confront him directly. I was certain there was no flooding, but my wife had called and urgently demanded his return. I don't know whether the cab driver intentionally drove slower or took longer routes, or if Dennis knew a shorter way. But when we entered the yard, Dennis's car was already parked there, and he was engaged in a heated argument with another man, as you witnessed. I asked the cab driver to stop closer to Dennis and his interlocutor and to roll down the window. The cab driver mentioned something about male solidarity, stating that if he had known he was being monitored by a woman, he wouldn't have taken me as a passenger. I offered him extra money and it seemed that male solidarity had a price, because after that, the cab driver said, you have five minutes, and opened the window, ceasing his conversation. I'm telling you once again, you're mistaken. Dennis yelled at the man. If you weren't so narrow-minded, you would realize it. You were wrong when you started living with my wife, the man yelled back. What else could I do if she didn't want to live with you? Dennis countered. Don't you think it's our problem? Can't we, as a family, sort it out ourselves? The man argued, pointing at Dennis. We've already sorted it out. I've seen how it's been handled. And mind you, it's my family, so it's my problem. Dennis responded. I tried my best to understand what they were discussing and grasp the situation. However, the cab driver's radio suddenly began emitting static in voices. The dispatcher was trying to find a car for a certain order, and my cab driver decided to respond to it. While he was conversing with the dispatcher, I couldn't hear what was happening outside. Eventually, the cab driver regretfully informed me that he had a new order and asked me to vacate the vehicle. Even though I didn't protest or offer additional payment, I had no choice but to exit the cab. Where should I go? It was an open yard, and no matter where I stood, I would be easily noticed. 
Dennis didn't even know that I knew his address. How could I explain why I was there instead of being at home? And then I saw you approaching. The solution came to me quickly and spontaneously. I don't even know where I found the courage and audacity. And you know what happened next. They left, and now I don't know what to do. Why did I come here, and how should I handle this? During the last part of Yana's monologue, I tried to control myself and avoid smiling. I didn't want the girl to think I was laughing or worse, take offense. I patiently waited until she finished her story before raising my voice. You know, Jan, Dennis is indeed secretive, but this girl, I began. What do you mean, wife? Yana interrupted, asking me again. A wife who is not really a wife, I admitted, unable to hide my smile. After that, I briefly explained to her that Olia had been living in Dennis' apartment for three months, and I had the honor of meeting her when she was out with the stroller. I didn't have many details, but Olia shared the main facts generously. She was Dennis's half-sister and staying there temporarily after leaving her abusive husband. Yana listened to me in disbelief, but I believe I managed to convince her that Olga was not my wife. While we were talking, Dennis emerged from the entrance. Yana's eyes showed a hint of panic, and she appeared somewhat saddened. Well, I'll try to play Cupid, I said, winking at Yana. How? Yana asked, with a hint of anxiety. You'll see. Stay here, I instructed, opening the car door and stepping out. Spotting Dennis heading towards his car, I called out to him, asking him to wait for me. Greetings, I said, extending my hand to Dennis. I have a favor to ask. Good afternoon, Dennis responded nervously, shaking my hand. I don't have much time, sorry. Don't be in a hurry to refuse. I'm not asking for myself, I assured him. What do you mean? Dennis asked, clearly puzzled. There's a very charming girl. I began mysteriously. She's waiting to talk to you. You know, she's in my car right now, and I don't think you should postpone the conversation. Sit beside her in the car and talk things through before both of you lose your nerve. It would be more comfortable for both of you on neutral territory. I was intrigued by what the conversation between Dennis and Yana would entail and I was relieved to see that Dennis didn't close the car doors. He sat in the back seat, leaving his feet outside as he smoked. I positioned myself at a short distance, not wanting to disturb them, but hoping to catch snippets of their conversation and discover the resolution to this story. What are you doing here? Dennis asked calmly. You know, Dennis, it's time for us to have a serious talk. Yana said in a calm yet nervous tone. I haven't talked enough today. Dennis replied anxiously. Go ahead, tell me. Are you married? Yana asked firmly. I've already told you that I'm not, Dennis responded, surprised yet confident. Who is the girl living in your apartment? Yana continued her inquiry. She's my sister, Dennis answered with even more surprise. And where are you going with this? Why didn't you tell me you had a sister living with you? Yana asked, her tone displaying some relief. Because I didn't think she would stay this long. Dennis answered, raising his voice slightly. I was embarrassed about the situation. She's not even my full sister, she's the daughter of my stepfather. I thought my crazy family would never show up, but here she is. She showed up out of the blue with a child, bruises on her arms and neck. She started crying, saying she had left her husband and had nowhere to go. So she asked me if she could stay for a while. She wanted to become a city girl, found a husband from the city, but nobody can take the village out of the girl. I wouldn't be surprised if she provoked those beatings, but I don't condone that brute of a husband. It's the last thing you want to do. Was he the one who came? Yana asked, shocked by what she heard. He did, Dennis confirmed, exhaling a puff of cigarette smoke. That silly hen, my sister, called me in hysterics, saying her husband had found her, calling on the intercom and making threats. What was I supposed to do? I snapped and came here, and there he was. Honestly, he's a decent guy. We never knew each other before, just met now. 
I don't know, I couldn't live with a hysterical woman, but if that's what he likes. So it's just the two of them, he won't harm her, right? Yana asked, her concern evident. They're leaving, Dennis replied with a smirk. They decided that they made up and are getting back together by mutual agreement. Dennis, why didn't you tell me? Yana continued with a touch of tenderness. I had already made up my mind, so it was you who went back to her in the evenings. That's precisely why I didn't tell you, because the situation was ridiculous. I couldn't handle staying with that screaming child for more than a week. How could I kick her out? She's my half-sister, but she's still my sister. A friend let me stay with him, but he imposed rules, no coming back late and no women. Did I have a choice? Dennis spoke seriously and confidently. Well, you could have stayed with me, Yana explained in surprise. Let's go, Dennis said as his sister and her husband emerged from the entrance. I'll introduce you, but promise me that once you've met, you'll forget about my parents. I hope we won't see them again. As they exited the car, Dennis closed the back door and held the front door open for Yana. Then he met my gaze and, saying thank you, waved goodbye to me from a distance. Before heading home, I left all the car doors open to let in some fresh air. During that time, I observed Dennis and Yana engaging in a conversation with Olia and her husband for a few minutes. Then, with his arm around Yana, Dennis opened the driveway gate for her. Looks like he invited her to his place after all, I thought. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. How often I've noticed that it's women who take the initiative and bring about a breakthrough in relationships between men and women, and often these breaks are for the better. While I wish men would take the right steps in their relationships in a timely manner, things often unfold as they do. In any case, revelations are always unpleasant. However, if one is faced with such failed revelations, and even with a happy ending, there's no need to worry. Since I have involuntarily become a sort of guardian angel for Dennis and Yana's relationship, I'll keep an eye on them but hope that they will navigate their feelings and questions on their own.